Now, like I said, I've shortened this up a lot because I started getting into it. I'm going through the scripture and I'm, I'm writing all this stuff down and I'm making my slides and everything like I do and taking my notes. I was like, oh my goodness, there are a lot of lessons to learn from Ephesians chapter 5. But one thing I, I do want to go back in Ephesians uh, chapter 5 verse 1 says, be imitators of God. I think that's one of the most powerful phrases in the entire Bible. You know, as we walk through this earth, as we walk through our daily lives, we are supposed to be imitators of God. And you know, another in um, 1 Corinthians, it says, be ambassadors of Christ. And I love that phrase. I love that saying. Um, you know, when I was in college, we had an ambassador from another country come and speak to us who was an ambassador to the U.S. And he's the only person from Niger I've ever seen in my life. He's the only one that I know of that I've ever met. And I thought for, for the last 20 years, he is the only representation of that country I've ever seen. And as we walk through our lives, as we start our week tomorrow, and as we leave this church, we're ambassadors for Christ. You may be the only example anyone sees of Jesus as you walk through your life. You may walk out that door and someone see you leaving and you walk out and they're going to say, that's the only person I know that is an ambassador of Jesus Christ, an imitator of God. That is who we are. So if we're going to be ambassadors of Christ or imitators of God, we've got to know what God looks like. We kind of got to know the rules that he lives by. We got to know the things that Jesus did as he walked on this earth. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 15, and we're just going to take three simple verses of this, um, kind of breaking it down. If you read through um, verses 2 through 14, it's giving you a bunch of don'ts. It's like, or, or do's, you know, don't be sexually immoral, and don't do this, and don't do that, and don't, don't, don't. And we get to kind of 15 through 18, it kind of gives us some more of do's. And I love talking about the do's of being a Christian, and it's hard to talk about the don'ts sometimes. You know, if you tell a kid, you know, I have teenagers, and I tell them don't do this, they're going to want to do it more. You know, I have a kid who's about to be 10 years old, and I would say, Titan, don't do this. He tries to find the loophole to it, or he tries to get close enough to that line where he doesn't quite do it, but it still ticks you off a lot. And if you know my son, that is Titan through and through. He's at that age where he just tries to toe that line. So we're going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts of Christianity. So in 15... It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because these days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And again, we've just taken three tiny little verses, but there's so much to unpack from it that I took, I call it the seven lessons to learn from this. And lesson number one, be careful how you live. In verse 15, it's just that simple. It says, be careful then how you live. Guys, we live in a world of danger. We live in a world of sin and problems and issues. And we got to be very, very careful how we live. We got to be careful what we put on social media. We got to be careful the way we act in schools. Because again, if we're going to be ambassadors of Christ, we got to be careful how we live out in this world. We can't make big mistakes because we're going to have big downfalls. You know, if you've watched, you know, the news and you watch the, you've seen the riots and you've seen all that stuff that went on last year, you know, even when it comes to the pandemic, we still have to be careful how we live. You know, we can't just go out and be foolish because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what we might catch. We don't know uh, who we might offend. We don't know who, uh, by using our words wrong, we don't know what's going to happen. So we have to be careful how we live. If we're going to be imitators of Christ, we have to be super incredibly careful how we live in this world because we don't want to look like the world. We want to look like Jesus. And it's a hard line to walk in a world that we live in because we have to be careful because there's so much danger out there. Be careful how you live. Lesson two, if you're taking notes. Here we go. Be wise. You know, be wise. It says, not as unwise, but of wise. As we walk through this world, we've got to be in the Word. We have got to be in the Scripture, making us wise individuals, wise students, wise adults, wise grandparents, because we cannot be foolish people and live a life for Jesus. You know, we, if you look on the social media and you watch YouTube and you see these different things, there's so many unwise people out there that are making millions of dollars for being stupid. 
and that's just the way the world is. We, I'll just tell you guys, I've, I, I, I uh, started a TikTok a couple of weeks ago. You know, I've, I've, uh, it was kind of neat. I'll just kind of fill you in. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm kind of getting paid for YouTube now. But um, I had a kid the other day. He told me, he, this was a week before we started sc- uh, spring break. He was like, you're an influencer. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I had no idea what he meant. He's like, you're on YouTube. You get paid for YouTube now. So you're a YouTube influencer. And I was like, is that a good thing? Like, is that a bad thing? Like, I, I didn't know. But, you know, we're influencers. You guys are influencers in your daily lives. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you're influencing people for Jesus or against Jesus. You're influencing people every day on your lifestyle to be the right kind of student, the right kind of parent, the right kind of grandparent. You're an influencer just by living your life every day. Are you an influencer for Christ? Or are you an influencer for self? Or world? Or money? Or fame? Or whatever it might be. We're all influencers. And if we're going to be an influencer, wouldn't you rather be a wise influencer? Wouldn't you rather be an ambassador with wisdom and knowledge over um, your life living for Jesus? We've got to be wise people. Because again, it's a dangerous world. So be wise. Lesson three. Make the most of this. Guys, it's so, so incredible that we, um, we live in this world where we can literally become anything we want to be, do anything we want to do. You know, it may be harder for some people. It may be easier for others. But make the most of living your life for Jesus. It says make the most of every opportunity. You know, it's so cool. Um, you know, I, lo- I love going and preaching. I, I, my dream job someday is I hope I'm a lay pastor. I would love to travel two hours to this town and go preach and then go to that town and go preach. And I've been a filler. And I'm going to tell you guys, I love seeing your church the way it is right now. Um, I don't know if you've had more people recently or less people than this, but I've been to places the last few months since the pandemic has kind of slowed down and doors have opened again. And they'll have a church that used to be this size have six people sitting in the pew still. I've seen churches, I went to a church a few weeks ago that usually carries about 300 and they had like 16. And they're like, people just haven't come back yet. But I love taking the opportunity to go preach to those places. You know, for you, make the opportunity to get back into youth group because we have that. Make the, take the opportunity to get back into church and small groups when the doors open up for that and for uh, Sunday schools and all that stuff because those things are going to start coming back. I don't know if it's come back here or not, if you started your children's ministry yet or, or VBS this summer or, or your kids' camps or all that stuff, but it's going to start coming back someday. Make, take those opportunities. Be there. Take the opportunity to witness to others. Take the opportunity to live for Jesus out in the real world. Don't let those opportunities pass you by because there's going to come a time where it's too late. Make the most of every opportunity. This goes for everything. You know, I tell kids all the time, if you're in school, do it all. You know, be in FFA, be in the sports, whatever sport it is, be in track, be in cross country, be in basketball, softball. Do it all because you only have a short opportunity, a short time where you can do those things and then you can never do it again for the rest of your life. How many of you parents wish you could go back for just one day of high school and be like, I wish I would have done this again. I wish I would have done that again. I wish I could play that game again or that sport or that class or that teacher or take back that moment or whatever. I guarantee if you looked around, every one of us had one of those moments. Now, I wouldn't want to go back forever for sure, <laughs> but give me that one day and I'd take it. You know, but it's because we missed out on an opportunity we wish we would have had. Make the most of every opportunity. Lesson four, be smart. Now, I know this sounds a lot like have wisdom, but just simply be smart. Right here, we have more information at our fingertips than we've ever had in the history of mankind. And we use it to watch people get hit in the crotch and fall downstairs and, you know, do something stupid on TikTok and all those different things. And again, I just said I had a TikTok, but I've seen more stupid things in the past week than I think I have my entire life. All the pranks and the jokes and the falling down and the, you know, just all those things. It says, therefore, do not be foolish. We live in a world where foolishness gets put up on a pedestal. It says, therefore, do not be foolish. We live in a world where foolishness is at our fingertips, where stupidity and mistakes and and idiocracy is right here. And we watch it for hours and hours and hours and hours a day when we have more knowledge and scripture and and devotionals and testimonies and God's word right here at our fingertips, but we use it to see idiocracy. 
And I'm guilty of it too. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing a guy fall down the stairs sometimes too. But there's kids that spend hours upon hours upon hours on just foolishness. We've got to be smart. If we're going to be Christian men and women, we've got to be smart when it comes to the scripture. We've got to be smart when it comes to God's word. We've got to be smart when we are interacting with others. We've got to have knowledge inside of us. Knowledge is going to prepare us when we leave our parents' houses and go out into the real world. We've got to have knowledge whenever we go to our jobs to just interact with other people. We can't just be foolish all the time. How many of you guys have ever worked with someone who was just foolish all the time? Were they a very good employee? Did you want to be around them after about? They were fun in the beginning probably, but give them a few weeks and you're like, I don't want to be around them. They're lazy. They don't do this. They don't do that right. They don't, they don't, they don't. We don't want to work with those people. We want someone who's smart, who's dedicated, who's hardworking. Don't be foolish. Be smart. Lesson five, figure out God's will for you. The most important decision you'll ever make in your life is finding God's direction in your life. It says, but understand what the, what the Lord's will is. There is no better decision in this world than accepting Christ into your life as Lord and Savior and then finding out the direction that he has planned for you. There's no better decision in your life. It's not the job, the career, the money. Having Jesus in your heart and in your life and directing you in his direction is the greatest decision you can ever make in your life. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you get, you know, I've, I've had a blast the last couple of months. I'm teaching a Sunday school class, and it's called Open Doors, and it talks about taking the paths and making decisions. And, you know, do you take door number one or door number two when you're making big decisions in your life? And honestly, those doors don't matter as long as you're following Jesus. He's going to direct you into the right path, the right door, the right opening, and put you right where you're supposed to be. Understand what the Lord's will is for you. You know, um, I, when I was coaching high school girls basketball in eastern Oklahoma, I went to state with this team called Pittsburgh. We had seven girls. And I'll never forget, there's one thing I, I'm doing this lesson with them. And I, I used to do Bible studies in the locker room with them. And we would do FCA together and things like that. And I told them, the Lord will not give you the wants of your heart, but the desires. He will never give you the wants of your heart, but your desires. Because you know what? There's some days I'm like, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Whoops. And it doesn't happen because I'm just like, oh, I want to, but you know, when the cheeseburger comes over, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat four pieces of pizza today. I want to do that. Now, if I had a desire for that, I would be working out. I'd be pursuing that. I'd be, you know, eating lots of salads. I'd be doing this and doing that. You know, my favorite car in the world is a 1967 Cherry Red Hardtop Mustang. Love them. I think they're the most beautiful cars on earth. I want one so bad, but am I going to spend tens of twenties of thirty thousand dollars on a car no because i just want it i don't have a desire for it am i going to go to these different car shows or dealerships or get online and all that stuff no because it's something i just want instead of having a passion and desire for it when you have a desire for something you work hard for it when you just want something it's like eh, whatever happens happens understand what the lord's will is for your life when you know what the lord's will is for your life you have a desire for him a desire to serve, a desire to work, a desire to get into his word. And then your path will be a lot clearer on what he wants you to do. So figure out what the Lord's will is. Lesson six, <laughs> stay away from alcohol. Go to verse 18, stay away from alcohol. It says, do not get drunk on wine, or lead, which leads to debauchery. And actually, my one says, don't get drunk on alcohol. I don't know where that came from. So it says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. You know what? I've been, I went to college and, you know, did things and all those things. But, you know, I've never, um, I've never heard somebody say, man, I got so drunk last night and it turned out so good for me and I got a better job now. I got a promotion because I was so high yesterday. Doesn't happen. You know, and, you know, when we talk about being drunk, it's, it doesn't, you know, our society today, it's not just drunk. It's getting high. It's getting, you know stone it's getting all those different things because it the world's changed a lot in the last few years you know do not get drunk on wine which leads to evil and debauchery i've uh being a teacher and a coach for all the years that i've done this i've never been more sad or upset or i'm trying to think of the right term for this but as seeing a kid that parents left him because they were on the bottle or their parents were in jail in Anadarko because of the mistakes. They 
needed help. Their kids needed help. And it's hard. It's very, very hard. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. It's tough. I'm going to tell you, you know, working at Anadarko, I'm in my classroom one day, and I just hear, bang, just outside our door. I look around. We didn't know what it was. Just kept on teaching and coaching. And a lady was drunk, dropped her kids off at school, and then drove right through the car park to the next to mine. You know, it's 8.30 in the morning. Crazy. And again, because of that situation, they had to take the kids out of the home and put them into foster care and things like that. It's tough. It is so hard. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. You know, teenagers, as, as teenagers, you know you're not supposed to do that right now, but you're going to get tempted with it. You know, you're going to have it around you. You're going to have situations. We've got to make good choices when it comes to that. Lesson seven, be filled with God. Be filled with God. It says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Guys, we can get filled with a lot of things. With this thing right here in our hand, we can get filled with addiction to social media. We can get filled with porn. We can get filled with foul language. We can get filled with bad videos. You can get filled with so many things. We need to be filled, you know, we can get filled with greed, money, passions, desires. We got to get filled with the Holy Spirit. If we want to live a life for Jesus, we've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing else in this world. There's nothing better than to be filled with God and live a life for Him. And last but not least, this is kind of a bonus one I threw in there for y'all. As I said, I had a lot. An extra little lesson for you. Do good. This is my favorite Bible verse. In Ecclesiastes 3.12 it says, I know that there is nothing better than for people to be happy and do good while they live. This is a gift from God. Guys, there's not a drug, there's not enough money, there's not enough fame, there's not enough social media, there's not enough boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or kids. There's nothing better on this earth than to do good and be happy while you live. There is nothing better because every good gift comes from God. There is nothing better in this whole world than to do good while you live. I love your church because Brandon talks to me about the different services you do and the different, you know, work at so many of you guys help, and help at the food pantry and do things like that. There is nothing better on this earth than to do good while you live. As we go out into this world and we're setting the example of Jesus Christ, we have got to be doing good in this world so people see a difference in us. People see the foundation of love and joy and hope and goodness that you are leaving along your path as you're an ambassador for Christ. If you want to set the example, you know, it can't be with word or mouth, but it has to be with action and truth. It's through your actions of loving other people in this world that God is going to show, that you're going to show God's love to others. So as we start to wrap this up, um, we're going to just take a minute to pray. If you guys have any questions about your faith, if you have any questions about just if you've never had the decision, made the decision to follow Jesus in your life, today could be the day. Today could be that moment where your path and your life and your direction becomes clear because you know you're living a life for Jesus. Let's pray.